good morning to each and every one of you under the sound of my voice that can see my faith. This is the show, The Prophet Speaking. I'm Prophet Tommy Ingram live. My lines will be open at 256-369-1688. <clears throat> and I'm gonna try to get to the lines a lot faster today. <clears throat> that, um, you know, we can, I had a replay yesterday um, and the day before, but we had, a producer told me we had callers. I talked with Bishop Jackson met him, uh, like I say, good morning, hope he's listening. Uh, I will be coming up to his church and visiting with him probably this next Sunday, not this Sunday coming up, Lord's willing, but the next Sunday. So to you that are in the area that um, wants to come, I will be announcing that after I talk with him, Lord's willing, this week coming up <clears throat> to make for sure, uh, I'll be announcing his address to his location uh, up in Birmingham, Alabama. And um, the producer told me I had a couple more callers also that called yesterday. So if you want to call back today, that was a replay yesterday. I'm live today. My lines will be open in <clears throat> just a little bit. But what I want to talk about there, I'm going to open up real quick. I'm going to get the paid advertisers' websites on and show their product and announce their locations and phone number you can reach me after the show and phone number you can reach them. <clears throat> if you can, Rob, go ahead. Let's put up, uh, we'll start with blings and things, if we can start with them. Okay, that's blings and things. There's Miss Tori Harrison, one of the owners, co-owner, her and her mother own a, it's a ladies boutique in Gaston, Alabama. You can reach them at 256-441-4229. And you can get information on how to come to the store or how to order online something that you see that you like. And um, their hours are open 11 to 5, 11 to 6, 5 o'clock. Um, I think they're Monday through Saturday. I'm almost sure they're Monday through Saturday. So you definitely, uh, there's Miss Tiffany Ballou, also one of the models. I know her, went to school with her. And uh, they have a lot of nice women clothing and also a lot of jewelry they got a lot of real good cheap jewelry real nice looking jewelry but at a good price so you can give them a call 256-441-4229 4229-441-4229 and um get more information the next one to go up will be dress out boutique <clears throat> that's also in gaston alabama dress out boutique you see the hours of operation I think they only open Thursday through Friday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday now. But they have men and women clothing. And Minister Wilbur's going to get a, <clears throat> a, on his way out to leave to go get a good selection of men clothing and women clothing out of New York City. So you will have the latest fashions. I think he's leaving out tomorrow. And he also, if you still do need services of germ killing, he got a germ killing business fog and he'll come fog your business to keep it germ free. So you can reach him at 256-441-9095. 441-9095, right there to Minister Wilbur. He has a good fogging business there, him and his son Joshua. They can come and <clears throat> if, if they get too many, I'll help them. So that's, we, that's how we do that. But it's one of those things where germ kidding has become a big thing now in this country and all over the world because <clears throat> it's a lot of other things that people have been come, you know, germ killing mold and mildew. The, the chemical he used also kills mold and mildew. And he do cars, believe it or not. He got an instrument where he can just come in and fog your car. You know, if you want your car cleaned and germ killed because a lot of germs are toted from one destination to another and most of them are transported by you in your car, believe it or not. But you can give me a call out the show and I would definitely announce all, you know, whatever, give you information on those out the show. You see my number to be up there, 205-568-7038 for information on either of those businesses. But we're going to open up with a word of prayer, and we're going to get right off into it because I really want to open my lines up right after the word of prayer, those who was trying to call the other day where they can... Uh, not that, we're not going to do that one today. All right, got gotcha. you. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, I, <clears throat> I really want to get these lines open for questions and comments. And remember, if you call in with questions or comments, 
you must listen to, to questions or you must answer questions and listen to comments. In other words, I'm trying to cause you not to be talking at me and me not to be talking at you. That we can, whether we're in disagreement or agreement, we still can <clears throat> handle it civilized, but don't call in like the other day. The man called in and he just went to talking loud. Please don't be talking loud when you call in. We can hear you. You're not trying to talk from your location in Birmingham where I can hear you in Sylacaque. We can hear you. Don't talk loud and turn your television volume down when you call in. But we're going to open up with a word of prayer and we're going to get right off into the, to the, the topic. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, my Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Lord, give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us for our debts as we forgive our debtors. Forgive us for our trespasses as we would forgive our trespassers. Lord, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. <clears throat> for, for thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever. Amen. Heavenly Father God, we thank you in the, need, in the name of Jesus Christ, Father God, for your word, Father. We thank you for the gospel, Father, that you have given us the instructions in righteousness, Father. Your righteousness is found within the gospel. And Father God, we know that you're going to judge us by the gospel. So therefore, Father, we ask you to lead and guide us into all truth, rightly divide your word, Father, that we can put line upon line and precept upon precept. <clears throat> and please, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, save us all that believe in you. Amen. <clears throat> An aggravating nagging of the throat, that rain out there. I want you people to hear the word of God which you turn to Romans, the first chapter, in the verse 16. Because what I want to talk about today before I am kind of want to kind of do a brief summary on Lord's will and getting into next week's teaching. On, I'm going back into Revelations. <clears throat> and as I begin to reveal these things to the events that's going to happen, listen to what I said, the events that in Revelation that the word of God has spoken of, about it is written that are going to happen they're not written to take up space they're going to happen it's not a comic book and the mindset is <clears throat> I'm just really baffled and it's a good thing that you know I don't have a no hair where I could pull out because I'd be pulling it out I'm baffled with people who believe things that are not written but believe Things don't believe what is written. And it, it, it really bothers me. It really bothers me. It, it, it's, it's pondering to me. How can you flunk an open book test? That which is not in the book is not part of the test. It's not the answer. When you start talking about this end time, the answers are within the book. <clears throat> All these books that have been written the beginning of the end and the, um, all these different, you know, left behind movie books, those books are not based off the scripture. When they add something to it to, 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 to make the drama more dramatizing, it becomes a lie. Let's make sure we understand that. If it's not the truth, it's a lie. There's no such thing as almost the truth, you know, almost. That only go, they, they say almost is almost just only good for horseshoes. You get close when you throw the, 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 the thing, the horseshoe at the, at, the, at the pole. You get close. You can, you can win by being just close. But that don't work with God. It got to be what came out of the mouth of the Lord. And I think that most people are confused by that. Look at Romans, the first chapter, in verse 16, the Apostle Paul says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. He says, Unto the Jew first, and then to the Greek. Then he goes on in verse 17 and says, For therein, talking about the gospel, therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. He said, And it is evident that the just shall live by faith. If it's not written, it's not part of the faith. Romans, the 14th chapter says, whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Romans 14, chapter, verse 28. Whatsoever is not of faith, he said, is sin. And this is the problem that we have. Most people 
not understanding that the things that's been added by man and the doctrines of man, the precepts of man, being taught by the precepts of men, those things are of the devil. When you see the word Trinity, when you see the word rapture, and then before you, you, you should not have to even have to go no further. You should not even have to listen to what they're saying. Once they tell you they said something that's not in the scripture, it should be something within you, which is the spirit of God that says, that's not me. You don't even have to listen to it. That's not even me. If I can't find the name of your theory, well, I know I'm not going to be able to find your theory. The rapture is a theory that the devil has given to the believers and them that have believed it are going to find out that once you believe the rapture, you've been captured. You've been captured because it's not scripture. And to believe it, you have to believe a whole nother coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. I will be teaching and preaching on that beginning Monday, Lord's willing. Because it's, 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 it's really a baffling thing to me that a person can believe something that adds a whole nother coming. And they call it a secret. Only the saints know. The saints don't know it. The saints know it's a lie. The ones who believe it is of the devil. The same, that they not, it God, the secrets that God have, he revealed them unto his prophets. And to make the secret known unto you, the mysteries of God's word, I have to show you where it's written in God's word and it's according to his will. It will come to pass. Make no mistake about it. You can go ahead and start pre-studying before my message and teaching next week. You can start reading Matthew 24, Luke 21, and Mark 13, Second Thessalonians second chapter, Revelation 13th chapter, Revelation the 15th, 14th, the very 16th chapter. I'm going to be revealing things that's going to take place. It ain't even, it's not a comic book. I want you people to know it's going to make it in the end time when you understand the things that are written, it's going to make it look like the saints are losing. Yes, yes. It's going to be like we've been left in despair. Because in Revelation 13, chapter and verse 7, when the scriptures say the beast is going to make war with the saints, it's given unto him to make war with the saints and to prevail over them. It's going to make like we lose. He's going to be slaughtering saints like nothing. He's going to be slaughtering saints. So I want you people to know all these lies that you've been told, the church ain't going through the tribulation. Oh, the, the, the church of Jesus Christ, the saints of God are going through the tribulation that are on the earth at that time. They're going through. God is not coming to get nobody before time. He didn't come and get John before they cut his head off. He didn't come and get James before Herod stabbed him with the sword. He didn't come and get Stephen before they stoned him. I don't know what makes you think you and this, these rapture believers are better than those. What makes you think you're better? I need to know. What makes you think that you're more worthy? Because Jesus never told you that. But you bought into these lies. But look at Romans at 17, Romans the first chapter said, therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. And in other words, from one belief in the word to another belief. And the just shall live by faith. I got the, 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 the faith that I have is what the Lord has said. He talked about being beat. You know, you, I'm going to show you scripture where you, they, they're going to show you the souls of the people who have been beheaded. John was, the angel took John in the spirit into the future where he could see the souls that were under the altars in heaven who were beheaded because they wouldn't take the mark of the beast. So how are you saying they weren't, no, it ain't no saints going to be him? How they get to be up under the altar in heaven if they weren't saints? And how did the scripture tell you that they were beheaded because they wouldn't worship the image of the beast? You calling God a lie? You better watch what you're saying. You better watch what you're saying. My lines are open two, five, six. 3691688 people just like the baptism when I talked about this the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith I took you and showed you Peter baptized in Jesus name and I showed you Paul we have no one that can call in and has called in with a scripture showing an example of a father son and Holy Ghost baptism not one so where should your faith be and what's written. It is written. Everything Jesus used against the Satan in the wilderness when the Satan tempted him, 
He used everything. He said, it is written in front of it. You can't, you're not going to be with the excuse. And that's, and that's the problem that people don't understand. On the day of judgment, he's going to open his books back up. And what, he, what, you, what you can't find written in those books, and he show you you believe something that wasn't written, it's too late to repent and turn then. My lines are open, 256-369-1688. Those callers who called yesterday on the replay, I hope you're looking now. You can call in, and, and whatever your comment and question was, we can address it or listen to it either way. My lines are open, 256-369-1688. I want to talk about whatsoever is not of faith is sin. I want to talk about when Jesus said in Matthew 24, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. See, people don't love the truth no more because iniquity is the line, is the, is the, is the religious side, it's the religious side of sin. You know, you hear the word sin, then you hear the word iniquity. Iniquity is sin in the religious form. Because whatsoever is not a faith is sin. So iniquity is sin in the religious form. Many of you, because you were born into a situation of your mother and daddy, granddaddy, grandmother, aunties, uncles, all these people that be in authority of you when you were a child, they took you to churches and you begin to believe things and you, be, you were shaped in the iniquity of the things you believe. You were shaped. That's what David said. I was born in sin and shaped in iniquity. You're shaped in things that make you be as Paul said. You'd have the word of God with you. Turn to the 17th chapter of the book of Acts. In verse 22, I'm going to give you a chance to turn. To, that was my initial situation, but the Spirit has moved me to that way. I love when the Spirit of God moving me to go where I was not even even a mindset before to go. But I want you to talk, I want to talk to you about, it. see a lot of you out there are superstitious. The word superstitious means you believe in something that you can't understand. You don't even understand it, but you believe it. The people who believe the rapture, people who believe the Trinity, people who believe the Father, Son, Holy Ghost, Baptist, and them folks tied to the Trinity. They believe in something that they don't understand. They believe in God. A lot of people believe in God, and, 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 but don't understand him. The scripture makes it plain, without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. It's, it's, it's a lot of people, because it's a mystery, don't even know God and don't understand God. But they are very superstitious in their religion and that iniquity that they were shaped in. You'd have the word of God with you that, that don't have it. Write down 17 chapter Acts, verse 22. The apostle Paul, the scripture say, then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, ye men of Athens, I perceive that ye are too superstitious. He says for the next verse, for as I passed by and beheld your devotion, I found an altar with this inscription, to the unknown God, Paul said, to whom you ignorantly worship. Look at that. I found an inscription upon your altar to the unknown God, whom you therefore ignorantly worship. That's what Paul would say all the time, brethren, I have you not to be ignorant. See, if you don't know no better about what's going on, you will fall for anything. When you're ignorant, you don't know the truth. He goes on to say, the God that made the world and all the things therein, look at that next verse, God that made the world and all the things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and of earth, dwelleth not in temple, temples made with men's hands. See, I'm, and I'm going to tell you something, I, mean, I want to quote that part of that too. Let me stop right there. I used to hear people say this all the time when I first started seeking the Lord, and I would go to these people's church. You know, the first thing people say, ooh, you can just feel the Spirit time you walk in here. Oh, so you think God just run around dwelling in a building that was made with man's hands. You can feel the spirit. Did you, I've, I've talked with people and have had to correct them and say, are you serious? Do you See, if you got the Holy Ghost, you feel the spirit of God within you because God made you. That's where God dwell at in temple made by his hands. All that when I walk in a building, I can feel the spirit in there. That's a, that's a superstition. 
That's an ignorant saying. Ain't no sense way. How you going to feel a spirit of the Holy Ghost outside in a building, but you don't feel it, feel it in you? That's because you don't have it. Any, any person out there, I'm going to say it. I'm going to be bold and say it. Any person that made that dumb comment, please call in and repent because you don't feel the Holy. I, I hear people say it too much. Oh, I like that church. Time I walked in, I could feel the spirit in there. What spirit? You might have felt the spirit, but they want the Holy Ghost. What spirit did you feel? Because God moved within his people. The Apostle Paul said it plain and simple. The God that made the worlds and all the things therein. Look at that verse. Seeing that he is Lord of heaven and of earth, dwelleth not with temple made with man's hands. Look at the next verse. Neither need man hands for worship, as though he needed anything, seeing that it is he that give it life, that give it to all life and breath and all things. In other words, nobody can die except the Lord take their breath. Nobody. Write down Matthew 10 and 29. Lord made it plain. Are not two sparrows sold for a father in the market? Not one can hit the ground without the father? God is in control of all the things that live on this earth. And he's the one that stamp approves when they die. But the mindset of the superstition, it's the superstition that people believe things that they don't understand. Paul said, I perceive that you, 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 you being of Athens, you, you superstitious. See, to the unknown God, you people out there who believe that the Holy Ghost is a third person, they ain't got a name, you fit right up under the same category. You believe that Trinity, God the Father is one person, God the Son is the Holy Ghost is another person, and the Holy, I mean, God the Son is a, a, another person, and the, the Holy Ghost is a third person, a John Doe, what's his name? See, we that don't believe in no trinity, we know his name is Jesus. The Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost got one name. Just like your spirit, soul, and flesh body got one name. My lines are open, 256-369-1688. You people out there are superstitious. See, when you don't know the word of God, know his will, you superstitious. You say you believe in him, but you got to know him what to believe in. That's what Paul was saying over in Romans, the first chapter, 16 verse. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power unto everyone that believeth, unto the Jew first and then to the Greek. Therein, talking about the gospel, is the righteousness of God revealed. If you believe something that is right that was not revealed in the gospel, you superstitious. Because that ain't in the gospel that you believe. You believe in a rapture. You believe that God going to come. The scriptures only talk about his first coming, which has already happened, and the second coming. It doesn't mention a third coming. But you believe a third coming, but you didn't read a third coming. So you superstitious. You believe in something you don't even understand, something you never read, but you believe it. I see it on bumper stickers. I'm riding down the road. I get behind somebody, and they got a bumper sticker sitting up that people don't make money off of making merchandise out of you clowns who don't know the truth. And they say, in case of the rapture, this vehicle would be unoccupied. What rapture? The apostles never mentioned a rapture. Jesus never mentioned a rapture. We know 1 Thessalonians 4 and 16 says, the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, enter with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive remain shall be called up to meet the Lord in the air. Then so shall we ever be with the Lord. But the rap, that, that, that's not a rapture. That's a period of being caught up. And it never told you that he was going back to heaven. Because Peter told us when heaven, when the Lord come off the throne on his way to earth, heaven begin to melt. There ain't no heaven to even go to. He's coming on earth for the battle of Armageddon. But he's going to catch us up in the air so everything else on the earth is going to be destroyed. Make no buts about it. He has invited the birds. I'm going to show you in the scriptures where he invited the birds. Come to the great supper of the Lord where you can eat the flesh of men, all kind of men, great men, captains, and their horses. They told the birds, come to the great supper. This great supper is going to be God going to kill all these, the rest of everybody on the earth. If you're not caught up to meet him in the air, you're going to be killed. And he's going to cause the birds to come and eat your flesh. This is in the scriptures. 
This is from faith to faith. This from one place in the scripture to the other. I will be going, Lord willing, Monday. But see, I'm not superstitious. My faith is it was written. This secret rapture, this secret? Oh, it's a secret. When you start making them, tell them, show me in the scripture this that y'all say gonna happen. Well, it's a secret that had to be revealed to you. By who? The devil. I don't serve him. I don't worship and serve Satan. And, 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 and I, don't, I don't care what respect you have for anybody, whether it be your mama, daddy, or anybody, it don't give me the same respect that I'm gonna go and thank of them above that which is written. Write down 1 Corinthians, fourth chapter, around the sixth verse, fifth or sixth verse, the Apostle Paul talked about. And he used him and Apollos as examples, never to think of of men above that which is written. See, that's what got you. See, when the scriptures talk about from faith to faith, therein the gospel is the righteousness of God revealed, here come my favorite scripture. How you gonna know what's written in the gospel when you don't even study? Just like Jesus said, here come my favorite scripture, Matthew 22 and verse 29, write that down. You do error not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God. I'm going to tell you what people are good at doing. And black people, you know I know you because I'm one of you. You're good at doing one thing. You're good at congregating. You're good, in, good with fellowshipping with each other. Black people will go to church three, four, five times a week. You get in there, you jump around, you mop the floor, you're praising, you scream, you dance, you sing, but you don't know the word. When I come to these churches, preach, I've been all the way to Iowa. Cleveland, Ohio, Louisiana, Florida. These have been places I've been where I was preaching the gospel. And when I come in, it was amazed to me that when I started talking about the word, they would look at me like I was speaking a different language because they hadn't studied and even know what was in there. I've had too many people tell me, say, I ain't never heard that even written before. Now, what it were, you ain't been studying to see if it's written. What you've been doing is going to church all your life, and then you ain't never heard it preached before. Because these preachers preach circles. They always somewhere talking about David. They always talking about Daniel and the lion then. The three Hebrew boys, Jonah in the belly of the whale, the, 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 the resurrection, the Christmas, the Christmas story. This is all y'all talk about. That's when you, the devil know he got y'all. So you got a form of godness. Oh, we got a call out there. Thank God. Did the caller hang up on me? Call back, caller. I guess we had a caller. I don't know if I ran them off or not. Try that again, 256-369-1688. You don't know the word of God, and it's a sad thing. It makes it difficult for a preacher or a prophet of God to go forth and try to put you lined up with what's written, and you don't even know what's written. You don't study. It's one thing that when Scripture says study, show yourself a unto God, y'all think that means go to church and listen to the preacher. That ain't what that means. And many of you going to go to hell because you didn't. Do you think studying is an option? This is your soul on the line. You, you can, if it was a nursing degree, if it was a doctor degree, if it was a degree in law, you will study that book and know it because you're trying to get that money on earth. This is your soul. This is your eternal destination. Ain't nothing more important. Not nothing. But you don't know the word. But you think you know God. They think they know God by going to church, hooping and hollering, the preacher especially. And I'm going to get on these black folks because I'm black, I know. And one thing I ain't never seen, I ain't never seen a white man do this since the other brother had a problem with me the other day. I ain't never seen a, 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 a white man get on a, a, a preach and, and, me, and, and, and this is his preaching. And you know, Jonah was in the bed, yeah, yeah, all this yeah and hack and ha. I ain't never seen a white man do that. I seen you black Negro preachers do that. And you know what? Explain to me where you got that from. Because if I read the scriptures, I don't see them hacking and hocking. My lines up. I got some. Listen, I got an alt with you. I'm going to bring it to your front. Because you don't scare me. I ain't trying to be liked, approved. I'm telling you, read most of you don't know the word. It's because how these preachers actually call themselves preaching it to you. What is a hoop? It's the 
the worst thing you could ever see. If you, 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 I'm embarrassed to be black behind that hooping. I'm embarrassed to be a black preacher that see other black preachers get up there with ha, uh -huh. hoo, ha. What in the, you are embarrassing your whole race calling yourself a man of God doing that foolishness. And I don't care who you is. I don't care if you don't like me for saying it, but prove to me that's the Holy Ghost. They talking about that's the Holy Ghost when they start doing that. Prove it. Jesus never did it. He was the Holy Ghost. The apostles were full of the Holy Ghost. On the day of Pentecost, the scripture said Peter stood up Full of the Holy Ghost. Wasn't no hooping and hacking going on. You black folk gonna go to hell behind your emotions. You want somebody to entertain you. You want to be entertained, go to BET, Black Entertainment Network, and watch television. But when it comes to the gospel, you shouldn't want to be entertained. You should want to be taught. Jesus said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. How somebody gonna learn something he preached? Well, ha, well, ha. 256-369-1688. I said it. And what you going to do about it? What you going to do? Prove it. You got a problem? Prove it. You got a problem with me? Prove I'm wrong. That's when you don't know the word. That's when you're getting ready to receive the Antichrist as the Lord Jesus Christ. You're going to receive him because you didn't study to show yourself approved and know that the devil comes first. The beast rises up by the sea first. The antichrist comes first. The man of sin shows up first. Folks run around talking, Jesus could come at any time now. No, he can't. He can't come at any time. He going to come when the appointed time that he said in his word that he would come. And he said in Matthew 24 and verse 29, immediately after the tribulation of those days shall you see the son of man coming in great clouds and glory. After the tribulation, go read it. Matthew 24, 29. Quit making it true about black people not reading. If you want to hide something, they say put it in a book. A black person never find it because they don't read. I came to prove that to be a lie. If I had to prove it by myself, and it's time for the rest of you all to start reading. Study. Quit just showing up at a building. And I'm trying to figure out why is you toting the Bible? You don't read it. When you at home, do you read it and study it? You can't be. Ain't no way you could be that deceived. Somebody take you down in the water and baptize you contrary to what they did in the scriptures and you ain't even picked up on that yet. Then they can't tell you what's going on in the end in Revelation because they don't know and you don't know and you stay the hollering you going to heaven. Well, I can't wait till these things start coming. I can't wait till my two big brothers get here in Revelation 11. She them two prophets and two olive trees to stand before the God of earth. I can't wait till they get here and shut the heavens up that it don't even rain for three and a half years. Y'all going to be confused about that. What we're going on? We got some bad weather. Must be sending them satellites up in the sky. I think that will cause the bad weather. What's going to cause the word of God going to cause through it from them two prophets that they don't rain on the whole earth for three and a half years? That's what's going to cause it. You sit around here, look, ick, they're talking about that's why they keep sending them spaceships up there. We keep having bad weather. You just as superstitious. You just as superstitious and stupid as you want to be. You are ignorant. You're just what Paul said. I have you not to be ignorant, but because you won't study, you are ignorant. You're going to be ignorant all the way to the lake of fire. My line's over 256-369-1688. Some of you say, that boy never did this. That's the first time I've seen him act like this. I, 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 hey, I'm, when the Spirit of God moves in me to preach, it's time to preach. And if this, thump, if this word hits your toe, you say, ouch. But you go back and see and make sure it's the word. I ain't gave you nothing that ain't scripture. All that hooping and hollering, dancing around, standing up on pews, screaming and singing. People are so silly. And these people run around, I got, I got to have me a preacher. My preacher got to be able to sing. Preacher's job is to preach the word. How can you be a preacher that's, that look dressed real nice, nice suit on and can sing and the important part of getting rightly dividing the word of truth to you, that's not important. That's why you're going to burn in hell. You're going to burn hell. You're going to be fueled to the fire. You people think that you can know God and not know what his words say, and he's going to save you. If you don't know what his words say, you lost. My line's open, 256-369-1688. Thought we had a call a while ago, but I guess they said, I don't know if I want to call him that. He in a rage. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm in a righteous rage. When, 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 when Paul said, 
that he perceived that these men of Athens was too superstitious. They were too, he said, you superstitious. A lot of you don't understand, you fit right in there. Under, believing in something you don't even understand, that's superstitious. If I believe in God, I should be able to understand him. And like the Lord Jesus said, be ready to give a man. Oh, be, 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 be ready to give every man a word for why you believe what you believe. In other words, don't be sitting up there ignorant. If you ignorant, you can't explain what you believe and why you believe it. But if you don't study to see what's written, you ain't got nothing no way. This rapture teaching, I'm going to demolish the rapture teaching Monday, starting Monday. I'm going to take you in there and show you what's written. It's going to put line upon line every time. It's going to be the same thing was said here. It just lines up with what's said here. Ain't going to be no confusion. But what confusion come place at is when you start listening to stuff that's written outside the word and you receive it as it is the word because it came from somebody who say they're a preacher. Oh, you're a man of God. They, go, they start going looking at what he, what he got physically, the material he got. He's a man of God. He blessed. He got all kind of housing cars in there. With, that ain't. That ain't how you judge if a man's a man of God because he got all kind of material things. The Apostle Paul made that plain over in the first book of uh, Timothy 6 chapter. He said gain is not godliness. You got to be ignorant to believe that gain is not the godliness. Paul said you didn't bring nothing in this world and you ain't carrying nothing now. He said, but some people suppose that gain is godliness. But it's not. That's what we look at. We look at all these preachers on Trinity Broadcast Network. They got to be a God. Look at all the people they got following them. I thank God ain't nobody following me because I ain't never told nobody to follow me. So if you, I, you, you can't follow me. You don't even have permission. to. I, I'm telling you right now, you don't have permission to follow me. I'm not looking for followers. I preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and I point people to the apostles' doctrine. Follow them because that's what's written. That's the problem right now. You can't tell the difference between a, 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 a true man of God and one that's false. You can't tell the difference. But you're going to wish you had them. You're going to wish you stop all that just going to church for entertainment. Church is not for this. Church ain't supposed to be no VFW American Legion. It ain't supposed to be no the, the alternate nightclub. This is our alternative. God has given us an alternative to he don't want us in the clubs. So we just have club in the church, that ain't, that, that, that's, you, that's you all's mess. But you don't know the word, though. The word is God. And if you don't know the word, you don't know God. And the scripture make it plain that God going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. Been going to church all your life, don't know what's going on. My line's over 256-369-1688. You black people out there, if you mad, stay mad. Scratch your butt and get glad. What they do tell, tell us, you mad? Scratch your butt and get glad. Come and tell you right now. That, that hooping, I ain't never seen it but in the Negro race. And it, you, if you, if you white people, I ain't seen y'all do that. But I'm going to tell you what white people really get on my nerve with, thinking that they don't, originally, the only people that knew God. In this country, it took a while. And I, I'm going to tell you what scripture, I'm going to tell you what religion was. They just not, it ain't been too long ago that they actually said that they feel like God might talk to a black man and call him to preach. The Mormons. But a lot of them got that same mindset anyway. See, they ain't never seen a Negro like me. You can get your best white preacher, bring him down here. I let him open his book. I won't open mine. I'm going to show you that myth about the black people. It ain't about all of it. It's in a book. And the Spirit of God led me to read and read and study that book. And he taught me that book. And I ain't never worried about it. I don't need your Oral Roberts University. I don't need your Brimham Young. I don't need your seminaries. I don't need no John Hagee book to talk about the end. John Hagee is one of the biggest false prophets. Him and Jack Van Impey, God went him and killed Jack Van Impey and got him off. I got a call called in, but if you're calling for me, to call in on this program, call that number 256-369-1688. That 205-568-703 is for after the show. It's for after the show. But let me say this right here. That John Hagee on Trinity Broadcast Network called himself preaching that rapture and preaching about the end time, one of the devil's biggest ab advocates. He's one of the devil's biggest advocates. 
Jack Van Nippen was the same way. They preached that rap to the devil, used them well, wrote books and sold books and made millions off of you people. They fleeced the sheep. Many of you been fleeced by that foolishness. You believe that foolishness. And some of you thinking because these guys got big churches and God using them and they on TV and they got big churches, they know more than you. Bring them down here and sit them down right here in front of me. I ain't going to open mine. I ain't going to bring them. I show you a volcano of scriptures that can erupt out of me at any time because the Holy Ghost there. And what is God? My God is a consuming fire, and he burns the living life in me to be able to come forth and bring things back to my remember that's written. Not this old stuff that entertain you, telling you what you want to hear. Jesus already told you. He already told you in Matthew 24. They shall bring you up to be afflicted. You shall be afflicted. They shall kill you. You already been told. And you let another man come tell you, oh, don't worry about that. God going to come get the church. No, no. This ain't no birthday party. Uh -uh. God going to let them slew us like never before. This be the days of vengeance, the Lord said. We're going to look at all these scriptures, Lord, we're going to start Monday. This rapture, this lie, this lie got to be exposed. I'm going to pull the clothes off the rapture preachers and, and, the, and the clothes off the rapture itself. I'm going to expose the devil. I'm going to show you that. And that devil got a plan with that, that, with that doctrine. It's got a plan. He got to, he, he going to get you in a good place with that. I explain that, Lord's with me. My line's open, 256-369-1688. Call in. Call. You got something to say? You black people got probably come against these hooping preachers you got? All that hat. All that I ain't come to, listen, remember, I came to start some trouble, all right? When I get off the air, it's a preacher come on right behind me. Every time I watch him, all he doing is hooping and hollering, hooping, hacking. And them folks just sitting there looking at him. Some people say, if that man ain't said nothing to you, why you bother? I came to do what the Lord told me to do. Expose them, point at them, make them known. Romans 16, chapter and verse 17 said it plain and simple. I beseech you, brother, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, mark them which cause divisions and offenses, contrary to the doctrine which you have learned, and avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. God ain't never had a hooping preacher. Not one. I don't care how y'all talk about Oh, he can preach. God ain't never had a hooping preacher. Where did he come from? What did he do? He repeated, is he a parrot or is he a monkey? Because a monkey see, a monkey will do. So hooping started before he didn't bring it. He saw somebody else doing it, he started doing it. It ain't in the scriptures. So that lets you know he followed another human being. That lets you know out right there, that lets you know that he is not following God. He's following another human being, and he ain't following the apostles. The apostles didn't who? It ain't in the scriptures. My line's open, 256-369-188. 256-369-1688. I know y'all mad about that. I know them black people mad at me about that. Think I care. Get mad. Don't bother me none. Then they start to you know, you know, they want to buy a dime. Well, you know how black people, you know how we are, man. We got to kind of make the people... Because, you know, we are, we, are, we are really emotional and we are really, you know, our culture, do, we do a lot of dancing and this and that. Ain't nobody got a problem with you dancing. David danced. If you said you wanted to dance in the churches, that's fine and welcome. David danced. We got scripture. Now you got something to bag up. It's written. But show me where it's written where they were hooping. It ain't written nowhere. Just acting a fool. Just acting a fool. Y'all folks love it. Y'all folks love it. The more they try to put a little, uh, 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 they, they tuning up. And y'all just love it. I love when they start doing that. Yeah, you do. And then when you ask them, what did he preach in church day? I don't know, but it was good. I know you don't know. Because he was hooping, you couldn't understand it. And then you don't study. Put that on top of it. You don't study. He don't have study. Most of these preachers actually go out to the Christian bookstore and actually get these bought sermons. Or then you got preachers, right? Preachers, I've got that. I know people that I know personally. They write sermons for other preachers. This is pathetic. <laughs> this, these are people who don't have the Holy Ghost. Now, I'm making sure y'all make sure you understand. These are people that are of the Harlot Church. Huh? Yeah, this is what's going on. You're going you're gonna to have church all the way to hell. I declare it now, and I would declare it on their judgment because the Lord going to be right there with me. He going to declare to y'all, I had him. But, you know, you, you looked at him, and you looked at him like, he don't even look like a preacher. Like there's a textbook dress code for preachers. 
I got to get me a priest collar, you know, and cover up my neck because I'm a preacher. Letting these women run around calling themselves pastor. It's the same hooping preachers who let these women call themselves pastor. They won't sit them down. They're going to let them go all the way to hell with the scriptures telling them, I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to assert thought over the man. Let the woman keep silence in the church. There's a reason for that. We got the best example. It was Eve who the devil went to to cause the fall of mankind. He went to the weaker vessel that God created the woman. The woman is a weaker vessel. But there's no, you don't see these people, there's nowhere in there where they won't sit these women down and say, look, I'm gonna help you save your soul. Go somewhere and sat down because you don't supposed to even be, women call themselves apostles and everything. Let me make sure I make this plain on public television. The qualification to be an apostle you had to have men body parts, okay? You couldn't have, if you can bring forth a child, God showed them bring it, have a plan for you to bring forth his word. Let me say that again. I like that. I ain't never said that before. God just gave it to me. If you were created to be able to bring forth a child, God, the same God that ordained you and built you and created you for that, for that purpose, that same God ordained and created that you should not bring forth his word. You should not bring forth his word. Not the word of God that's written. Prophecy? Yes, a woman can prophesy. She can be a prophetess. That's written. Prophecy. Prophetess. Those are words that come directly from God, and they can be changed. In other words, what I mean by this, the prophecy can be for this to happen, but if the people take heed, it don't happen. So God can use a woman for that. But God said, not my written word does not, the woman, when, when, when the body of Christ come together, Christ is the head of man, man is the head of the woman. The woman ain't got no head to even be speaking in the church. There has to be order. God said there must be order. We're going to talk about that too. We'll get to that for this program, for this program, after I get to through dealing, taking care of God's business in Revelation. We're going to show you that the art of the church, you didn't see the Mary and Mother Jesus stand up and say nothing on the day of Pentecost. Peter did. Why? Because God called Peter to do that. And God, call, God called Mary, the mother of Jesus, to do what she done. But she had to be obedient. You would think in the natural, in our time period, a woman that brought forth the, uh, Jesus would be like, I can tell you more about anything because he, he came out of me. But she knew better. She knew that ain't the order. She understand. I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to absurd the thought of the man. You women around called themselves pastors and everything. In the heart of church, not in the body of Christ. Not in, not in, the, not in the church that's led by Jesus Christ. Not the church that... You know, Jesus Christ is not the author of confusion. It'll be confusing. At what point do y'all figure it confusing when a scripture say, for a I suffer not a woman to teach nor to assert authority over man, but you got women calling themselves pastors. So, but you don't see no pastors, bishops in the scripture that were female. He told Timothy to go out and find a, the husband of one wife, not the wife of one husband. The deacons, you got women around calling themselves deaconess. What? Scriptures, deaconess. In the scriptures, the deacons, Peter told them, find you seven men full of the Holy Ghost that they can handle this business right here. And the business we're handling was waiting on tables, making sure that the elderly and the widows got fed. The daily ministration of food. They told, find you seven men of the Holy Ghost to handle that. He didn't even tell the women. And you think you always thinking the natural woman is a better wa waitress than a man can be a waiter. But guess what? They were having problems because the women was not doing it properly. And some people would complain that they folks didn't get fed. So he said, find you seven men full of the Holy Ghost. Why the Holy Ghost? Because the Holy Ghost is not going to show no partiality. Because you know what a woman say first. I'm going to make sure I feed my family first. I'm going to make sure I feed my husband first. A man full of the Holy Ghost is going to be led by God to do what is the righteousness of God. He ain't, they ain't going to have no partiality. See, you people don't read the word, so you don't know that.
That's in the book of Acts. Go read it. But you don't know that. Because you don't read the word. My line's open, 256-369-1688. We had a phone call that hung up. And I'm live today. We had phone calls yesterday when I was on replay. It's not making sense. I'm here today to answer questions coming. But this preacher might have scared some folk from even asking me anything. And if it did, you did well. If you feel like you're going to ask something to the country. Because I ain't got nothing but that sword with me. That's that word of God. It's sharp and quick and it's, it's powerful. I ain't got no opinion of nothing. 256-369-1688. I guess I hushed up all them old denominational black preachers who do all that hooping. They might got something to say to y'all about, we heard that guy was talking about us. But let me just tell you what I got to say. Now, don't tell them, tell me. I'm on national TV. I said it about you. I ain't no backbiter. That ain't of God. We got to call him. Go ahead, call him. You're on there. Hello. Tur hey, turn, turn your volume down on your television, okay? Put it on yeah, mute it, because I can still hear myself. Go ahead. Oh. Okay, go ahead. What, what, you got a question, comment? Oh, yes, I do. I have a comment when we were talking about women ministering and talking about the hooping. That's a, that's part of a personality, especially when men start hooping like that. Most of the time, they get, uh, give, you the, uh, give you the word and give you the scripture. And, and you're right. Some of them do hoop, 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 and don't give you the word. Because I've been into... Uh, 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 churches where I said, I don't understand nothing he said. I don't um, think I okay. know he was hollering. Okay, then let me ask you a question. And they have uh, taught me the word and, and, and brought the word plain. Let me ask you a question. And then they hey, 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 sister, hey, hey, sister, hey, sister, can I ask you a question? Yes. Let me ask you a question. When, of yes. God, when God gave gifts unto men in the book of Ephesians, the fourth chapter, the scripture said he led captivity on high. And when he descended on high, ascended on high, he gave, gave gifts unto men. He gave some apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. One, right. one none of those women, okay? Okay, now let me, let me state this part right here. The gift of the word of God in a person has nothing to do with his personality. So you mean to tell me all these preachers who've been copying Reverend Ike off of TV for years doing that hooping, you mean to tell me all of them got the same personality? No, they don't. Yeah. No, they don't. They, no, they don't. They don't have the same personality. You said the no. magic word. Hey, you listen. Copy. Copy. Okay. The magic word. Copy. So when they you copy know. them, if they copy them, they don't have the same personality. Then that's not a personality thing. Yeah, yeah, they say, they, well, let me tell you something. It may not be exactly the same personality, but it's, it's copy. Copy. You said the magic word. Copy. So do, should, who should? Who should, should uh, let me ask you a question. Copy. Okay, I ask you a question, sister. Should they copy the apostles or should they copy the men in front of them? You know they should pop, uh, uh, do the apostles, but, but they're not built like that. Some of them, it's not like that. Some of them are in it for money. What? Some of them are in it for women. Okay, okay, but let me ask you a question. Let's just get he, this he straight. Select the, he should let the weak and the tear. He, he should let them grow together. Well, listen. He should, he'll do the division. Well, guess what? That's, should, and then what about... What about Man, hey, hey you doing, I'm going to tell you about this here. You doing, call, I'm going to have to hang up on you now. Minute. You about two seconds about getting hung up. I'm going to tell you why. Don't call in here talking at me. Let's talk to each other. Quit talking at me and quit talking so loud and answer my questions and listen to my comments, okay? Can we do that? Let's, let's be friends. Let's, let's talk then. Cause, but see, because you got an attitude about something that I've spoken is truth, and you calling here trying to justify something that's a plain lie. I'm not trying, that, I'm listen, not hold trying on. to justify not, not, them, them people... A person hooping got it from another person. He copied them. That's not his personality. Right, right. And God don't use men to preach the word with personality. He used men to preach the word with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven. Okay? Yes. So, so, just, so, so God, uh, hold up now. Just hold up now. We don't, our personalities don't change. If you're a, a cheerful person, are you a person that tells jokes? God will give you wisdom how to even tell a joke well, in church. Well, ma'am, listen to me. We, we, we got, we got Women you about to get hung up on. You about to get hung up on. Cause I'm gonna tell you something. What you? I don't care if you I, hang up. Well, she don't care if I hang up. I go ahead and hang up on her. Let me tell y'all some people and listen to me good. That's one of those women that are silly because the scriptures have been quoted. She she trying to justify and use a, a, a excuse. 
you ain't excusable, man. God, this is what, this is what the people, and this is why I don't have a problem with these people when they go to the lake of fire. There's no way you can justify, first of all, she's trying to justify the women when they, in the scripture, there were no women preaching the word. God didn't ordain for a woman to do it. Now she's trying to justify these black men to my, well, that's just a personality. No, you, that's a, just a lie you just told. Because I'm gonna show you what's my personality. My personality is not Richard, I got it from Richard Pryor. My personality is my personality. These preachers are hooping because they saw the other one hooping. Monkey see, monkey do. That's what they doing. You don't say that's their personality because everybody that's hooping don't act the same when they not hooping. So they don't have the same personality. But the personality that they supposed to have is the Holy Ghost in them. The person of Jesus Christ in them. Christ in you. The hope of glory. If Christ doing the preaching, when guess what? Christ ain't doing the, 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 the Christ don't do the hooping. Go ahead, call you on there. Why you hang up that phone? Cause face? you told me I could. You said when well, you I don't care if you hang up on me. I said well I will cause you trying to over talk me. I don't need you over talking me. You, we you can. Been, you've been doing all the talk. I supposed I to do all, all the. the no, that time I listen to me. So right now. No, no. So right now. Mm -hmm. Okay then. I'm gonna. I got good. two minutes. I got two minutes, and I want you to listen to me. I don't care that you disagree with me, but I'm going to tell you what I do care. I do care that you have not sent any offerings in to even be thinking that you can overtalk me, okay? This is, I'm just being honest with you now. If you want to, you know, I'm going to keep it frank, and that's my middle name. Let's keep it frank. I'm going to talk more, but listen, I'm going to talk more than you. I'm going to cash app. Listen, that, that go my cash app right there. But I'm going to overtalk you because... I got to have the fuck responsibility to pay for the program. You, I got one minute well, left. Okay. Listen, I got one minute left. Will you please call back Monday morning, same time, 10 o'clock through 11. I will be on again, all right? All right? Listen, people, I got about 30 seconds, I guess. I still got one minute. Listen to me, people. I'll be back on Lord's Willing, 10 o'clock Monday morning. And I was glad she did call in. I don't have no problem with disagreeing with her, and I don't have no problem with her disagreeing with me. It don't make me dislike her. But let me tell you something I'm not going to do. I'm not going to go along with her lie to get along with her. Those people don't have the same personality. Those folks are just of the devil, and they're doing the same thing, devil man. I see you all, Lord. When anybody want to call me out the show, my cash app, if they want to call me, show me to give another, another way, 205-568-7038. I will be back on Lord's Willie Monday live. Don't wait till the last minute to call in, and we can talk a lot longer. See you all, Lord's willing, Monday, 10 o'clock in the morning, the prophet speaks.